Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss if the 2024 is the year for corrections in craft bourbon. My name is McNew. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Bo Cumberland and Tracy Napolitano. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, oh, so yeah, we're going to be talking about uh, corrections in the world of bourbon. What we mean by that is, you know, companies getting bought out, that sort of thing. What's happening in the world of bourbon? We'll get to that after the break. For right now, Bo said there's something he wanted to talk about. What is that, Bo? Yeah, so as we record this episode, Mm -hmm. I am nursing a, get this, I have a zit or an abscess or something inside oh god so it is very painful it hurts and it's at the point that it's starting to itch but i can't like get in there to scratch it so it's driving me nuts so my question is what is the most painful or worst place you guys have ever had something like that like a home pimple or an abscess or something like that oh i've got i got one it happened to me this week get this get this i I never, uh, my daughter has had these. I've, uh, I've never had any problem like this, but I got a stone, a salivary stone. So a, a stone in your saliva gland. Uh, that's a real thing. And it's incredibly painful. Uh, what happens is it, it's, it's just like a kidney stone where, you know, there, it creates this blockage, but it's in your salivary gland. And the problem is, when you eat, then when you eat, of course, saliva, that's just happening. You're, you're not thinking about that. That just happens inside like your mouth. So, so, yeah. So, so once that, that stone begins to block, all of a sudden your neck begins to swell up and it's painful. Your, your, your throat's raw and, uh, and, uh, this, the stone gets in there. So I, I, and I'm going to Key West, you know, next week, the whole thing when, when as this is happening. And, uh, uh, you know, I go, and I don't know what's happened. I, it was this my lymph nodes. What, uh, you know, do I have cancer? What, what, you know, all of a sudden it just pops up and they're like, oh no, this is, we know exactly that's a stone and, uh, you know, it may come out or you may have to, you know, you, you can, you can go to the trip and all that, but you're going to have problems eating and all this stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, and, and if you can't, you can work with an ENT to get it out of there. But, uh, the next day, the next day, um, it ends up, I feel something choking me at the back of my throat it's that stone coming out and uh yeah but it, it yeah and um i just drank a bunch of water and i just flushed it down you know it really so it, it goes through runs through the process then whatever that is but yeah it's incredibly painful uh, and i'm sure it's like a grain of sand i mean this is not a huge your salivary gland it's not like it's a, got a softball yeah. sized thing in there it's a it's tiny little thing that's causing all this pain but yeah uh, very painful yeah yeah, and something you can't really deal with. So yeah, that was that was mine. And yeah, just, my, my, mine was definitely kidney stones. Yeah, kidney stones. Yeah, I, I had that's uh, incredibly three of them at one time. I think it was oh, a God. five or eight and a ten. Ugh, yeah. And I only have one kidney, so I had to have that. I had to have three sessions of that machine, that liptotripsy machine. Yeah, yeah. That's not the funniest story about the kidney stones. 
as it happened in the middle of the night. And I came out of the bathroom and I tell Barbara, I'm like, there's something wrong with me. I can't go to the bathroom. You know, I'm in pain. My back hurts. So Barbara used to always get on WebMD to try to cure us. Oh, God, that's the you worst thing that you, right? Yeah, you don't go to WebMD. <laughs> don't go there. So, <laughs> oh, God. you know, my wife's beautiful and smart, and she uh, decides I have gas. Oh, God. <laughs> so she proceeds to put my my feet up on pillows, and she's like WWE wrestling, dropping the elbow on my gut, trying to make me pass gas. Uh-huh. And be literally beat the shit out of me, and it turns out I had no gas. I had <laughs> So my wife beat the crap out of me trying to get the gas out. Yeah. Hopefully uh, she doesn't want it to come out, but that time uh, she was trying. Yeah. Or she just was like, I can use this as an opportunity. <laughs> like, the cure is I'm going to have to give you elbow drops. Yeah. yeah. She <laughs> might have just liked beating yeah. me up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So one or the other. Uh, McDo, you ever have something painful? Uh, you know? Yeah. So um, with both here, like, I, like, if you see me, I have really shitty skin. Like, it breaks out all the time. But um, so the nose thing, like I have had that happen, like inside your nostril, all and I can't, I can't leave shit alone. Like I'm a picker, I got, I got to mess with it. So I have yeah. literally taken my nose and shoved a Q-tip up it oh, just to God. get that pressure to pop it, oh. and it's it's disgusting and it hurts. It hurts. They're very painful. I've had one. No. It's very painful. But I will literally take a Q-tip because that that seems safer than like any sharp object I have. Sure. And, Try to like put enough pressure to make it pop because it's not going to feel better till it pops. Okay. And then also though, castor oil after I do it. So if it won't pop, if it's like a real cyst, real deep, if you put castor oil on something, it draws it out. So if I knew it wasn't coming out at night, I would put castor oil on it up there with a Q-tip, go to bed, and it would pop the next morning. So. Okay. Castor oil okay. is a key. Also. Now, if uh, if we were all podcasting live together, uh, not on Zoom, McNew, would you jump in and help Bo with this? Because I, I <laughs> okay, one time yeah. he had a cyst on his back. I, I and, feel like I have traumatized you, Bo in the past. You pulled his shirt down and 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 started well. popping it, and even though he was saying, "No, don't do this. Don't 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 do this to me." And uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's what it was. That's like a that's like a five years ago story. I yes. would absolutely help <laughs> which was not we helpful. all we all enjoyed it and laughed about it and we're enjoying it until until you're draining it and then the smell hits it, they, uh, they, of they this pus me. being drained out of this, this uh i can still smell size. that oh god yes <laughs> that, that stuff that thing has been there that thing was there for like six years so it wasn't like you know came up <laughs> over <laughs> <laughs> no, I I really cannot leave shit alone. And I'm like, let me let me get it. I'm like, I gotta get right. it. And I really do have so many scars over on my face because of that right. reason. But and I just I gotta pop if it's there. I got I gotta get it. I, I can't gotta get it. Mo could have used it one time. He was uh, had to drive home and he had uh, one uh, another one on his back. And uh, uh, it was that same one. It was the same one. Okay, but it, so it's, it, it's exploded more than once. So it explodes. Oh, oh. It's, it's like baseball size and it explodes. Well, Bo doesn't think that the cyst on his back exploded. He thought someone got him on a drive-by shooting <laughs> when he's on the highway. But, no, here's a, here's a funny thing. I, this was back when I lived in Tennessee, and I would had come up to help Royce for the weekend, do uh -huh. him up here, whatever. And I had left the distillery to drive home, and I was in my wife's car, and I stopped at the McDonald's at the Loves, right by Neely Family Distillery. Yeah, okay. I'm in the drive through and I feel this cold stuff go down my back, and I'm like, what the hell just happened? So I had to drive three and a half hours home, leaning forward so that this stuff did not get on my wife's seat. So oh, that was God. the most uncomfortable three and a half hours. Why didn't drive. you buy like a blanket at the Loves or something? They have I those probably, cheap uh, blankets. Like they're fourteen dollars. Just buy yeah. a blanket. They got yeah. those real cheap, uh, cheap ones that are right there. Yeah, they're, also, they're right outside the door. Yeah. So I know I watch enough Doctor Pimple Popper and gross okay. shit to know if you don't get the sack out, it's going to keep coming back. You can pop that all day, every day. Yeah. If you don't get the sack out. It'll regrow. It comes. It comes back. Really? So, gotta okay. get the sack I'm out. Gonna, gotta I get the sack that, out. Probably. Apparently. Man, I have to the doctor and get that thing removed. It, get it I removed. have sack issues, I think. Yeah, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. All right, on that note, it is time to drink. I'm sure everyone, that just primed them for a drink. It will, what is it? 
yeah. What is everyone drinking? Uh, winter rye, I'll go here. Uh, I, I went with Hemingway rye. So uh, this is a great whiskey, too. I, I like this stuff. It was one of my finalists for my whiskey of the year. So let's see what we got here. That's solid. That could be enough. If it, uh, we've, we've seen uh, worse cork pops than that win. So we'll see what happens. Uh, McNew, you're next. So I have a, it's from St. Elmo's here out of Indianapolis. It's their own bourbon. It's like dark cherry and vanilla. It's their own bullshit. So we're going to this. Okay. Okay. No, not enough there. Uh, I got the lead. Tracy, what do you got? So I've got a barrel sample of Buzzer okay. Roost Rye. Oh, we did our barrel picks this year. Yeah. Um, so we got what was left in the, the pick. So let's see what this does. Nope, nope, not enough there. Not enough there. Bo, your last but not least, what do you got, man? Well, I may get kicked off the show for this, but um, <laughs> I'm drinking this. It's called First Call. It's a um, like total wine kind of special <laughs> bourbon. So it's cash bourbon. strength, and that's actually uh -huh. pretty good. It, it okay. Was like, oh, it was pretty cheap, but it's pretty good. So okay, fair enough. Okay, no, not yeah. enough there. Not up there. I uh, I won that one fair and square. So cheers, gang. Cheers. cheers. The can. I'll drink up again. All right. We'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, it's going to be time to talk about is 2024 the year of corrections in the world of bourbon? We'll do that in just a few. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. Speaking of Executive Bourbon Steward Certification, the ABV Barrel Shop in St. Louis, Missouri has developed a unique partnership with the Stave and Thief Society to offer a preparatory class to assist you in getting your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification. This prep class costs only $25 and is available to take live or online via Zoom. Graduates of our class receive a coupon code good for 15% off your Executive Bourbon Steward Certification held in Louisville, Kentucky. This saves you almost $90. Additionally, you can collaborate with fellow attendees to split travel costs when you go to Louisville. If you're interested in signing up for the class, simply head over to abvbarrelshop.com and check out the classes and events page. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller and one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history, where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. This is Paul Tomaszewski from MB Rowland, and you're listening to The Bourbon Daily. Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we're talking about is 2024 the year of corrections in bourbon. Corrections, yes. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, it seems to be, you know, there was a couple of consolidations and buyouts and stuff last year. And uh, and like I said, uh, locally we've got uh, one distillery going out of business and a couple more that are for sale that I know around. So there's there's things happening. It's a tough time out there. I know barrel prices for those that have source brands and things like that. Barrel prices are coming down. Um, so you it's uh, you know over the the previous couple of years when they were hitting sky high, 
uh, we're seeing it come down. I think it's only going to get lower. Uh, I mean, there uh, we keep seeing more distilleries. I just, just this week as we record this, an announcement came out that there's one that came online in uh, in Kentucky that's going to do 150,000 barrels a year. That's a lot. That's a lot. So uh, it's uh, it's it's interesting what's happening, and is all this going to lead to uh, to corrections, to uh, companies closing their doors and being bought out, that type of thing? What do you guys think? Uh, I saw something today. Um, basically, it was saying for collectors from a, a, co- a company that values collections, whether it's baseball cards, whiskey, whatever, it said start drinking your dusty whiskeys because the the days of buying and spent overspending for these are over. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting take for sure. And uh, yeah, I can't say that that's wrong. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's kind of what we're seeing out there. Well, what do you think? Is this uh, going to be one of those years? I think it is, and I think we're already starting to see some of that. Um, I mean, just you know, the, the the people in the industry that I talk to, you know, we we talk about the. Uh, I think the ones that are going to be hit the the hardest are the um, the NDPs that don't, you know, they just buy it put their label on it and don't really do anything to it. And, but, but we'll charge $200 for a bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think we're already starting to see a lot of those kind of get in trouble. I'm not necessarily saying that any of them have fallen by the wayside yet or, or the majority of them, but I think those are the ones that will go first. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there's certainly some of that, that, uh, that going on. And, you know, we can always look to, to beer. And I mean, you think about what happened in beer, a big explosion, and then, uh, uh, you know, all the craft, uh, beers come out and then, uh, and then you start to see the correction happen in that industry, consolidation and, uh, beer breweries closing and that type of thing. So I, I think we can look to that industry to, to kind of see what's going to happen in this one. Don't you? I agree. Yeah, I yeah. do. I mean, plus you got stuff like this coming out. Mm-hmm. This is a drink called Louis Louis. Okay, it's five milligrams of THC, five milligrams of CBD. Okay, and a huh. lot of people are buying these. Yeah. So, do you have to buy that at like a dispensary with the the actual THC in there? You can buy just buy it anywhere. Liquor. You can buy really? these at the liquor store. Okay. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. We don't have anything like that here. These are yet. samples. These are samples yeah. given to, to us to try. But yeah. Okay. Okay. I know somebody that would love those. That's They're quite tasty. <laughs> Yeah. And they give you a nice little buzz at the end. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's, that is interesting. So, yeah, that's going to be, uh, you know, another threat to business too, that, uh, that uh, you know, just another another player potential uh, involved. What do you think about this, Victor? What's going on in Indiana? Well, you know, you've got a lot of great craft distilleries in Indiana. What's happened with them? We do have a lot of great craft distilleries, but I haven't seen anything that's like gimmicky like fly by night like these are guys who have like really worked their asses off to like make a good distillery to make good brands i feel like the ones that are like getting sold out or closing are just ones that are like yeah i just want to make bourbon i want to make a whiskey and put my name on a whiskey like those are the ones that are not doing great indiana like i think maybe future indiana heritage brands we have some like solid shit happening in indiana Mm-hmm. yeah yeah what i think the good news is if there's a if there's something good that can come out of this is i think the ones that are doing it right and, and those are the ones that we're friends with that that uh, we like the distillers and we bring them on the shows and tracy has them at his festival and stuff like that the the good ones are, are going to thrive they're going to going to continue to grow and yeah. continue to get bigger this isn't a threat to them uh they're doing things right and and they're going to be okay uh what happens in this correction is the the bad ones are going to be the ones that shake out so i don't think it's a bad thing for us as bourbon fans i really don't so yeah but you so. look at some of the acquisitions last year you know i mean the guys at penelope were, were knocking it out of the park yeah yeah and then, you know they got bought up by a larger company that they're just the stuff that's going to start coming out of Penelope because of this. Mm-hmm. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. 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 In that case, it's very good. So like Matt from Penelope, like fucking fantastic. I love him. And yeah. they, they did everything right. And I know getting, they did. Getting thought out was a good thing. Right. It's not always a good thing. Any, anybody who says Penelope. that, that those guys are, are lucky or no, they worked their asses off to get where they're at. They, they and, deserve and what they like, they're I, doing I, stuff to make sure they have, doing it right like for coming to bourbon fest 
they're doing a preview thing. We don't know what it's going to be yet. They're keeping it secret, but it's going to be a VIP only event and it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like yeah. they, they worked their asses off. I don't think they slept for like five years. <laughs> so they, no, I, don't they 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 I don't think they did either. I don't think they did either. I'm yeah, so well, happy you know, Mike that. and his wife just had a kid, what, a year ago, so they probably still yeah. aren't sleeping from that. They probably well, aren't. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's that's a, a, a cool thing that happened with them. And yeah, I think I think that's just going to happen. I, I think the ones that are doing really well that want to sell out, they'll have opportunities to do so. The ones that are doing really well that uh, that want to stay in the business, I think they're going to continue to thrive and, and, and just get stronger. So I think that's what happens out of this. I do think the, the bad ones that are barely holding on and this is a tough hit business and all this that don't thrive, don't evolve, don't don't dedicate themselves to making great whiskey. I think they're going to go by the wayside. And again, having less options uh, sometimes can be a bad thing, but it also sometimes can be a good thing. And I think I think we've got to the point where there's a lot of bad whiskey out there. We always like to say at the at, at the shop that there's you know we have 55 distilleries in in uh, you know Missouri, and there's probably about seven or eight that make really good whiskey, and the rest. Not so much. And, and that's those numbers probably carry through across the U.S. If you look at all these distilleries that are out there, uh, it's a, actually a very small portion that are actually doing doing good things. So, uh, yeah, there, there probably needs to be some corrections. And I think this is going to be the year that uh, that's going to play out. So we'll see. Well, also in this, Steve, I think um, you're going to see a correction in the secondary market as well. With this. Yeah. 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 yeah and so. also. I think in craft whiskey, especially craft, you know, who's a business owner and who's a whiskey maker, right? Like Mm -hmm. there's this aspect to making whiskey and they know that, but their passion is I want to make whiskey. I want to hire the right people to make this a business for me. The people that are like, I just, I just want to make money, but with whiskey, they're going to they're not going to do well. That, they're, that's they're the ones that are going to that they are, they're going to fall by the wayside. I, I really believe that. I and I can I think and I think I, I'm not special. I think any of of the four of us that are on the show uh, could have a, a you know hour long conversation with someone one on one. We could walk away and be like, this is one to watch out for. This one is they are in it just to, to make. They're trying to cash in on something that's popular at the time. And maybe they were a whiskey fan, a drinker, but they don't have the passion to uh, to you know really set themselves apart and do the, do the things they need to do to make great whiskey. So again, that's it's going to be tough on them. It, it will be tough on them. I think the whiskey fans that get into the business of making their own brand is the ones that are going to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. You got somebody who comes from inside the industry and leaves one company to start their own. I think, right? You know, they're they're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they already they, have a following. They have a reputation, so yeah, right. And they know the ins and outs. They know what to look for and what to do. But there's one here in Indiana that just took on a huge investor. Like, good for you. You're getting the money, but you're not. You're you're not passionate about making whiskey. You're passionate about making money, and that's yeah. not. It's not going to be an out in the long run. Yeah, <laughs> that can be a bad thing for sure. So, yeah, so we'll, uh, you know, none of us here have distilleries or anything like that. So we get to sit on the sidelines and, uh, you know, and, and then people, you know, I probably, I bet you every single one of us that, that are on this call today, it's someone, one of their friends or somebody that they've ran into in business will be like, when are you going to start distilling? My answer is never. My friends <laughs> make great whiskey and stuff like that. I, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. I'll just drink. I hear stuff. it all the time. Right. Yeah. People yeah. always say that. Yeah, like, like yeah. and no, I'm not going to start one. <laughs> I I don't even want to have a brand. Like, right. if, hey, do you want to have a single barrel named after you? Absolutely, all sure. day, every day. Let's do that. But I I don't want a brand. I don't want to do that. I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go on that note we're going to wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us tracy we'll start with you where can people find you uh nola bourbon on instagram and facebook and info at new orleans bourbon festival.com um you can get me there with any questions about the festival or you just want to chat whiskey okay bo how about you I'm on all the socials under my journey through the american spirit and those same socials under bourbon sasquatch all right mcnew on Instagram at McNeil ABB. All right, for me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that company website, abvnetwork.com. Check it out. Everything that we do is out there. We put all of our previous shows. we got our blogs, all of our promotional stuff, abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us, the ABV Barrel Shop. 
we've always got something going on, new barrel picks and stuff like that. And the best thing that we can do is you can come in. We say we have the best whiskey in the world. We back that up by saying, hey, try before you buy. Taste it, and you can decide if it's right for you. So check us out online, what we have going on, abvbarrelshop.com. McNew, anything else to say before we get out of here? I would like to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review. That includes comments. It helps new people find the show, which is very important to us. And if you like what we're doing, we ask that you please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the ABV Network. Great job today, gang. Farnance will have a brand new show for you tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Until then, take care, everybody. See ya. Bye. 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 Peace. Before we let you go, let's talk about one last thing, the ABV Barrel Shop in the St. Louis community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on a couple of things. First of all, single barrels. We are the place where single barrels live. We go to distilleries, taste through the whiskey, select the best barrel, and have it shipped to our store where we present it to you, our customers, by allowing you to try before you buy. We're also known for the classes that we have in our education center in the store, as well as the events we have with industry professionals from the bourbon business. If you are in the St. Louis area, please come by and visit us at 6 Fox Valley Center in Arnold, Missouri. Or at a minimum, at least sign up for our email and text distribution so you know exactly what's going on in our shop over at abvbarrelshop.com. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.